The following podcast is for mature listeners. Although looked at in a light-hearted manner, some content may be graphic or gruesome. Also, due to the host's complete lack of maturity, those easily offended will probably be offended. Hold on to your butts. On your deathbed. I was on my deathbed, and by that I mean I was I was in my bed, sleeping, just sleeping like just, a normal person, sleeping just, like the sloth man that you are. The sloth man, indeed. Uh, are you recording? I've been recording this entire conversation. You don't miss a beat. I'm here because you never know when we're going to find a hidden gem that we can add into the end of an episode, and we don't know when we won't find a hidden gem. Exactly. Um, so, all right, listen. First things first. I I hit you with a little news story last week. Uh, not last week, last episode. Um, I have another one I want to hit you with. Whoa! Another little news story. That, another, uh, I, a little blurb for you. Yeah, this one's more of like a list, but I think it's really going to hit home with you. Um, Is this about obese people? It's about... It's about uh, masturbating brothers again, I think. Uh, oh, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> no, this was not. Okay, so this one is, um, I found a list of uh, weird, um, I don't know, this list calls them superpowers. I don't think I'd go that far, but um, special abilities of the wild redhead. Oh, of the, the ginger. The, yeah, 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 uh, the ginger, the ginger. And I'm, uh, we'll go through this list, and we'll see if you've noticed any of these things. Throughout your life, uh, along the way, uh, number one, Jake is redheads have a higher pain threshold than that other is people. an absolute fact. You think absolute so? Fact. Why? I, that, this is why I'm up to twenty six tattoos. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, and yeah. You, haven't, you haven't felt one yet. Um, yeah. This says that uh, tests show that redheads are less sensitive to particular types of pain. Uh, they react less to um, in- injected areas and pinpricks. So tattoos. Yeah, that yeah. would make sense. Tattoos, um, but they are, they are probably highly susceptible to emotional, to emotional pain. pain. <laughs> <laughs> you son of a bitch! You uh, fuck, right I, you're about. trying to tell me I don't do research on my own kind? <laughs> That's not even in the. It's not even in the article. I was just gonna throw that in there. Um, Jake, did you know you can produce your own vitamin D? Oh, uh, trust me, baby girl. I got plenty of vitamin D. <laughs> I'm out here to feed the needy. You know? I'm out here. I'm cranking vitamin D out left and right. Um, okay. All right. How about this? Um, they could be from any race or ethnicity. That's not really a. It's not really a good thing. I mean, I just, I just, I just, just picture me, I just picture me like straining really hard and yeah. then like pooping out like a, a vitamin tablet of vitamin D. That's all I can one, think of right now. I get egg, a vitamin one egg. Drop of vitamin uh, liquid. Uh, how about this? They tend to smell better. Uh, high levels of acid in their skin tend to break down fragrances differently, producing stronger aromas. Uh, I did not know that my natural pheromones were. Attractive. I do like to wear, a, you know, cologne. Well, stop. You don't need it. You Apparently, I don't. Apparently, it's just my natural animal magnetism. In this economy, you're wasting money on fucking cologne, and you're you're sporting look, the redhead. Look, man. I'm just saying. I'm I'm, up, I'm above the middle class right now. <laughs> you're doing all right. Uh, I do all right. How about this? Redheads need more anesthesia than normal people. Also a fact. So back in ho- like in October, I had an outpatient surgery on my face. Oh, uh, you had to, had to cu- get the twin cut off. Yes, they had to cut a cyst out of my face that was right below my eye. They had to give me three times the normal amount of anesthesia. I thought it was just because I'm a giant fucking ogre man, but it was. Be- I guess it's because I needed the n- more than the normal amount because of my. Rich, strong, pure blood. Yeah. Did apparently. they say that? Did they? Did they? 
No, they just said like, hey, well, no, they never brought that up to me. But um, <coughs> nothing is as terrifying as when you're having surgery while you're awake and feeling them cut something out of your face. Oh, sure. Did you wake up? I never went to. You know, it was never like a go to sleep situation. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, I was. A, I was awake for the entire thing. Oh, they just hit you with like a Novocaine needle? Yeah, they hit you with a, a needle in the area, cut you open, and I'm like, oh, I can feel that. So then they hit me with a second dose, and then they're like at the base of where the cyst was, and they were kind of like getting the rest of it out. And I'm like, oh, I can feel that too. And then they had to hit me with a third one. Ugh. All right, you ruined the fucking whole podcast now. I know. Sorry. Um, I'm sorry I'm too much man. How about this? How about this? Redheads are aggressively impacted by temperature, and by that they mean they they burn really easy in the sun. Um, this is we a, all knew that, right? That's common knowledge. Yeah, I I uh, I often tell people that I'm allergic to the sun. I feel like um, yeah, I'm like one of those kids from that movie The Others with Nicole Kidman and how they're so photosensitive. Well, see now, and it's fucked up because I have the same issue, and I don't have all these extra redhead powers. I'm just a normal guy with with uh, fair skin, and I have the same problem. I can't go out in the fucking sun. Um, all right, the, one more little here. little vamp babies. That's all we are. Yep, yep. One more here. Um, redheaded people are more likely to get skin cancer. So we'll end on that. Um, Damn dog, you sleep on that one. <laughs> damn, <laughs> damn dog! Like, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna hit me with that. Yeah, not really, it's because not really it's the, a superpower, I would say. Yeah, that's literally my arch nemesis is the sun, that giant glowing orb in the sky that is, you know, it's gonna bring you down one day. That's what's gonna put me in my put me in an early grave. If heart yep. disease doesn't get me first, ha ha! You 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 burn the candle at both ends here, Jake. Hey man, that's the only way to do it. All right, let's get to the real subject of today's uh, conversation. Um, yes. You said that you wanted to get back to serial killers, and we had another topic lined up. We kind of caught an audible because there was a lot to it. Um, There's a lot of meat on them bones. And, and, and we may have accidentally stumbled across uh, one of the great serial killers of all time, and I'd never heard of him until, um, like, until this episode, researching for this. Like, I was reading the article that you had sent me, and I'm just, like, reading things out loud, like, in astonishment. Yeah, it's pretty wild. Um, it's wild in a large sense because of how wild the world was at the time. Yes, like, agreed, yeah. So so what we're talking about is a man by the name of Peter Nears. Is that yes. how you would say it? That's, Nears, how, that's how I read it, Peter Nears. Yeah, okay. It's N I E R S. Uh, Petter? Is it Petter? Or it's P- oh, okay, it's Peter. Okay, great. It's probably Petter, to be honest with you. <laughs> it's probably, it is probably Petter um, Nyers. Petter Nyers. It's actually <laughs> the, the, the <laughs> article I'm looking at now has it broken down like, um, what do they call that? What do they call it where they break down the pronunciation? And they put yeah. The dots and shit in it. Frenetic. It's like follow the bouncing ball, you illiterate piece of shit. And it says it's, it's actually pronounced Nirsch, but that. Seems bonkers to me, so I'm gonna stick with Nears. And this yeah, guy, the, yeah, we're we're this is America, so we'll say Nears. This guy is from the 1500s. Most of what we know about Peter Nears, uh, no joke, comes from fucking folk songs and fables. But that's they're, they're, fucking wild in itself. That he right that that's how they used to transmit information was through folk songs. Like bards were a real thing. I mean, yeah. I like, could you imagine? Thing, like, that's where you got your news. You know, hanging out in your chambers by candlelight with your fucking mandolin, being like, "How do I convey the sheer terror that this guy brings upon local people while I'm playing this little ditty here?" Ding, right. ding, 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 ding. ding. <laughs> I don't think they quite went like that. It was usually. Oh well, yeah, a, that's more so the lute. south, but uh, it's usually on a lute more than a banjo. Mm. Um, well, yeah. But look, Let's talk kill count first because it's astonishing. <laughs> kill count. <laughs> yeah, well, this is fucking outrageous. This guy was convicted of 544 murders all in all. When all I don't even have done, that many friends on social media. 
This <laughs> this guy, he was committing to like 75 murders at a time. How do you even like remember 75 murders? Or do you think he's just throwing like ballpark numbers out there? I don't know. I mean, because back then, like, you, it's literally just like you're just getting them in troves, yeah, especially right. with like with how he was doing things. Um, and he was doing things. So he my was, man was doing some big fucking things. He spent his life as uh, basically living his like life a, like a candle in the wind, what? like a Robin Hood type uh, character, uh, but a little more gruesome. Like he was just yeah. a hillside. Like he lived outside of the city. He had a, a band of merry men, and they killed, raped, robbed, and pillaged. Yeah. Um, they. It, it said that he would run with a group of about twenty four people. They would sometimes do these attacks as a as a group sometimes they would split up and kind of you know get get as much bang for their buck as they possibly could but god um <laughs> that's such an awful <laughs> way to put it yeah i mean th- th- these were tough times we're talking 1500s 1500s is not when you want to be alive yeah because um, it's like everything's good and great during the daytime at nighttime though nothing nothing is guaranteed no uh it doesn't even have to be nighttime. If you're like a farmer who lives on like the outskirt of a of a town, yeah. At any at any point, somebody can just come and like kill your daughters and eat all your food and have their way with you. Yeah, because how how can you communicate with someone to like come help you? <laughs> you like this, pull, I, I'm you pretty sure this, loot. You have to pull yeah. out your loot. Oh man, this is my this is my emergency, Diddy. <laughs> Um, so his, his career is said to have spanned 15 years. And in that time he killed 544 individuals. And that number includes 24 pregnant women that he killed because he needed their fetuses. Like, fuck man, that is some real gruesome. Like my man's like, I I would like to know, like, I would have liked to see this man in action. Because I would like to know how his mind works. Well, I'll tell you what. You were you would have had a hard time seeing him in action. Because not only was he a prolific serial killer, he had magic powers. Um, oh, magic satanic powers. Yeah, right. They granted to him from the devil. So, it didn't start out with Satan. Uh, no. He, he, he got his first magic powers from a man by the name of Klaus Stryker, who... Klaus Stryker Which is a was, fucking sick villain name. <laughs> it really is. It, it, Klaus Stryker was his mentor. Uh, he taught him how to rob. He taught him how to pillage. Um, and he also taught him some black magic. Because God knows, you need to learn some, some dark arts. You know what I mean? I, hey, man. You know, they have a school for that, for defense against it. I mean, there's just things that you need to know and things you need to, you know... Equip yourself with. That's all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so he learned from his mentor uh, one of the, the most important things he learned: how to become invisible. He was taught how to become invisible, and apparently, it's not that tough. All you need is um, a fetus, and you eat the heart of the fetus. You say a spell. I don't know. I don't have the words on hand, and then you can become invisible. Um, this got him. This got him part of the way there. You know what I mean? Yeah, it, it's what helped him, pro, you know, move, move right, moving right along. Yeah. Um, so according to historians, this is when he started to gain the eye of a very important person, uh, the devil. <laughs> it's like- the, so the devil was overjoyed with the <laughs> the acts of Peter Nears, and he he gets together with Peter. And um, having some roundtable discussion about his uh, his his workings. Yeah, he. So it's believed that he gets he gets together with the devil. They have this meeting, and the devil actually teaches him some new black magic. The devil teaches him how to turn into um, a log or stone. Yeah, like will. inanimate objects, right? Yeah, um, shape shift. And, and, and sometimes uh, it's also believed that he could turn into a goat, a dog, or a cat. Um, Typical devil. These are typical things that the devil himself would change into. Yeah, yep. More yes. so the goat. But yeah, uh, it's it's also said that um, he was on the payroll. That the devil, the devil, started paying Peter Nears uh, money 
to kind of keep things going. You know what I mean? Like he was he was a henchman almost. Um, See, and this is why you kind of like you start to wonder like how much of this is folklore and how much of this is true. Obviously, we all know. That. I think I know where I draw the line. I think I can pretty much distinguish which parts folklore and which part. Are you having our time? With the oh, I mean, no, I was just about actual... to say, like, I, I know that the devil himself is not a real person. <laughs> or is he? Peter Neer begs to differ. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, I would have liked to know how his mind works. Because my man might have just been in the woods talking to a tree thinking it was the devil. That's true. Because um, he's just completely batshit fucking crazy. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Um, he was crazy, but he was also... so. More realistically, uh, he was like he was a master of disguise. So people thought he had all these crazy powers, but in reality, what is he? Is he Dana Carvey? Well, like master they of said, that, they they said that sometimes he would he could appear as like a leper. He would appear as like a common soldier. Um, yeah. See, but the thing is, like back then, everybody kind of looked alike. So it's like, oh, you rub some dirt on his face. Oh, he's obviously a leper. Oh, he slicked he his be. hair. He slicked his hair back. Oh, he looks like a soldier. Like everyone looked had like that downtrodden, beaten look to him. Yeah. So, well, that's because they were all downtrodden and beaten. <laughs> yeah, that also true for the most part. Um, we're talking but, 15th century fucking Germany here. We're not talking like the 1970s New York where everybody's wearing bell bottoms and whatnot. Right. Yeah. Um. So. Anyway, he. He goes on for a while. He's doing his thing. He ends up getting arrested in 1577. Um, some other members of his gang were caught. And this is when they confessed to, like, a crazy number of murders. He confessed himself to 75 acts of murder in this first uh, arrest. His uh, first go-around with, with his first tussle with the cops. Yeah, right. Um Lucky for him, he was able to escape and continue on with his, uh, you know, his his old routine. Jake, are you there? Have I lost you? Oh no, Jake. Hey, Jake, you're back. Yes, can you hear me? I can hear you. What happened? I don't know. <laughs> All right, let's start the podcast over. Oh, God damn it! No, just kidding. No, I was. Uh, I don't know. Where you we were telling me. You were that. telling me how he got. You were telling me how he got arrested. He did get arrested. Yes. And then he just kind of like slipped through the cops' hands. Yeah. And then as this is after admitting to like seventy-five fucking murders, which is already an astounding amount of people, and then he got arrested the second time, and that's where shit started to get a little dicey for him. Yeah. So okay. Um, yeah, so he slips through the he slips through the cracks, right? Uh, the first arrest. Um actually after the first arrest is when the devil reaches out. Um and they have their meeting. Um he he's taught, you know, the things we discussed, um the different black magics and such. Um he's also taught I want to know how the, to use how do you use black magic? Is it like oh. just something like you use like spices and like animal bones, it's, or is it or is it just kind of like a tarot card thing where it's like I play stealth plus two and it's just like fucking playing Dungeons and Dragons or something? No, no, no. It seems to be very uh, fetus based magic. Oh, um, oh, yeah. I yep, very. Um, it's like uh, cracking open a Cadbury egg. Yeah, so to turn invisible, you have Fuck. to eat. You have to eat the heart of a fetus. Uh, the devil also taught him that if you mix the flesh and fat of a fetus and make it, it into a, a candle, yeah, if you turn it into a candle, when the candle is lit, it will allow you to rob houses without waking the inhabitants. It's like um, a super stealth candle. Yep. Um, yeah. So you know, this helps. This keeps him out of uh, harm's way for a little while. Yeah, it's um. What is it? It was saying that like if he <coughs> eats the heart of a baby, a fetus, to become, to become invisible, gives him like all this vigor and like renewed sense of energy, as well as being invisible. a ninja. Yeah, right. Um, it, but 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 he slips up, and I'll tell you what happened. I'll break it down for you. So so he gets, he gets sleepy, Jake, and uh, oh. Peter decides that. 
he's gonna he's gonna stay a couple days in an inn called the Bell's Inn. It's a local inn, right? Okay. And while he's staying at the inn, he wants to take a bath. Now, in the 1500s, they didn't bathe often. In fact, they thought it was bad for you back then. Um, but he decides it's time. You know, it's probably been a couple months. It's been a couple murders since he's had his last bath. The women aren't really... Um, they're not as into it when he's raping. Uh, so he decides <laughs> really kind of kills the mood. Yeah. Um, so he heads to a bathhouse. And while he's at this bathhouse, like I said, he's he's a master of disguise, but he has a problem. He has a giant scar on his chin. Yes, it's um, very... Uh, it's, it's his tell. Yeah. So at this bathhouse, one of the, the people there, uh, a, a Cooper, by the way, there's a lot of people with the last name Cooper. Do you know what that is? Do you know what a Cooper is? Uh, a white wide receiver for the Los Angeles Rams. Mm. That's Cooper Cup. That's one of them. Well, um, I, I have no idea what a Cooper is. What is that? A Cooper is what they called a person who made barrels and staves out of wood. Huh. So that's why there's so many the people with the last name Cooper. Know. Yeah. That's um, actually very interesting. So there you go. So so a Cooper is at this bathhouse, and he recognizes the scar. He recognizes Peter Near. He's seen him on the wanted posters. And he, he kind of, he gives a little psst, and he tells the guy next to him, like, yo, isn't that the guy that raped and killed that's 544 that's people? That's that's I think motherfucker he, eats all them babies. Yeah, he, that, he ate Janet's baby. Oh. And then that guy goes, hey, hey, look, that's the fucking guy. So word spreads to this bathhouse. It never Someone's gets just back like, to Peter hey, Nick. baby eater. Yeah. No, they keep it on the down low. Two guys slip out, right? Now, now here's the problem. When he went to this bathhouse, he forgot his magic bag. He didn't forget his magic bag. Oh, he checked, fuck. He actually checked his magic bag at the front desk at the inn. <laughs> <laughs> no shit. So the two people sneak out of the bathhouse. They go back to the inn where he's staying, and they say, hey, we just saw this fucking guy at the bathhouse that looks like that guy that's been eating all the babies. Do you know anything about this guy? And he's like, I got his bag that he just left with me. We, we can look in here and see what's in there. Oh, uh, man. So they look in his bag, and in the bag are uh, several cut-off hands and hearts from murdered fetuses. Yep. Now, this is a red flag, Jake. I think that's a, I think that's a universal red flag anywhere yeah. you go. Yeah. So um, the townspeople react in a very Beauty and the Beast such manner. They They... Oh, rubble, 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 rubble. And they try they to get, like, Yeah, they get their pitchforks um, and they apprehend Peter Nears. Um, when he found out that they had seen inside his bag, he admitted his identity and said that he was guilty and confessed to his many, 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 many murders. Like, how do you remember that many people? I get it. Like, you're a quote unquote working I think, with Satan. I think, I think it's just a numbers game. At a certain point, I think it's just a numbers game. I think you're just going well. You're, it's, you're just you're just it's been seven years, three murders a night. Yeah, fifty two weeks in a year. Da 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 da. da. <laughs> it's one of those. There's no way he's he's remembering each one unless he's like a real fucking psychopath. That's what I'm saying. Like, but back then, like I don't know. I feel like the brain wasn't as evolved as it is today. But who knows? Like oh. we might have de we might have devolved from the <laughs> yeah. You don't know. Yeah, like these our people, brains could be smaller. These people built pyramids, and whoa, whoa, we're talking. That's like a thousand years before that happened. <coughs> well, but then again, we're also talking like five hundred years ago. Maybe it's been a continuous degrade. Yeah, it's possible. You're telling me, you're telling me that Europeans in the 1500s didn't make the pyramids? Is that what you're saying to me right now? Oh, uh, I'm facts off. I, yeah, but I'm also saying did those same people invent the jewel pod? Ooh, what? I don't know what a jewel pod is. Is this some it's pop a, it's culture a, it's reference? A, it's a vape pen thing. Okay. All right. You got me now. Yeah. Yeah. Where's their iPhones at, Paul? That way. That was the end of your explanation. Yeah. It's a vape pen thing. It's a. It's literally. You, yeah. You smoke it, and it's got like nicotine and shit in it. Oh, like J U U L. Yeah, man. The jewel pod. <clears throat> I thought you were referring to some sort of like bedazzled iPod. I mean, that'd be kind of cool. I feel like a gypsy would have that. 
Okay. I'm judging gypsies, by the way. I don't like gypsies. Whoa. Those are bold words coming from a man of your stature. With, Look, man, you've already your hair. Ju- made made <laughs> serious allegations and judgments against my skin, People. my race of pale skinned, red haired. I said you had superpowers. Emotionally unstable easy. people. Um, all right. Let's move on to what happened after uh, yes. Peter Nears. Because this is where shit gets mugs. really cool. Yeah, so... Uh, see, back in these days, they were fond of different torture... Um, you didn't just get a slap protocols. on the hands and thrown in the, thrown in the stocks for like no. 20 years. Like They're like, you know what? We need to give you a punishment that suits the crime. Yeah, and and I'll tell you what, a punishment that suits these crimes, this many crimes, um, he may not have, he may not have gotten enough. Uh, Peter Nears was tortured and executed over three days, so this wasn't a one time thing. This was no. uh, day one. It was very regimented. Day one, um, <clears throat> they tore strips of flesh from his body. They filleted my man they straight up. Him. And then they poured hot oil into the open wounds. Oh, man. Uh, that seals it up so that you don't bleed out. You know what I mean? Of course, yeah. It like, cauterizes the wound, but it's extremely painful. Well, we don't know. I, I mean, I wouldn't I've know, never but I mean, it, it just sounds You'd probably painful. be fine with your hair and all. Yeah, with my high tolerance for pain. Yeah. I'm sure you'd be fine. You wouldn't feel a thing. Um, on the second day, they covered his feet. In, with grease. Uh, I'm sorry? It's like a grease, correct? They covered his feet in grease. Oh, yeah. Yeah, sorry. Uh, you broke up a little bit. Yeah, they covered his feet in grease, and then yes. they they uh, held him Put over him a fire. Up, and basically, like, he started to cook himself. Yeah. Well, he didn't start to cook himself. The, the fire started to cook well, him. Well, the fire is what cooked him, yeah. He kind of, like, with the grease and the hot coals, it kind of, like, yeah. cooks you inside your own body a little bit. Yeah, and they got right to the point where he was about to be dinner, and then they cut the heat, they threw him back in the fucking, wherever they were keeping him, the stocks, maybe, and then they waited for the third day, and on the third day, he was broken by the wheel. Now, oh, yeah, man, let, let's talk being broken by the wheel. Um, this, was, this was something that wasn't necessarily done to kill people. A lot of times it was done to punish people that were convicted of, you know, small robberies and stuff. But what they would do is they would choose, you know, depending on your sentence, they would choose a body part. uh, Let's say, let's say your leg. And then they would take a gigantic wooden wheel and they would smash it down as hard as they could on your leg and break it into little pieces. They started with his legs, then they moved to his arms, then they went on and on and on. It, it, uh, the thing that I'm reading... Till the says, break of dawn. It says that he was slammed with the wheel 42 times. Um, then, a little technique they like to use, because all your bones have been broken into little pieces, you, you become really kind of stringy, right? Oh. So, so they would take your limbs, they'd bring in another wheel... And they would braid your limbs in the spokes of the wheel and then start rolling it. Oh, fuck that. Yeah. And, and you could be braided between the spokes of the wheel because all your bones have been broken into little pieces. Um, unfortunately for Peter Nears, uh, his, his black magic had run out and none of this killed him. He was <sighs> alive and... I was going to say awake, well, but not well. And a felt lot of awake. every fucking ounce of this. Yeah, eventually, they finally... On the uh, fourth day, right? They just said, fuck it. I'm not sure if it was the fourth day or like late in the third day, but they decided, let's just, let's just take... Let's we'll just quarter him. Let's we'll just cut this mother... Let's we'll just dice him up. Well, it's, it's, that, it's, it's that if you're lucky. There's a more gruesome way to be quartered, uh, which is where they, t- they take... Four horses, the four horsemen, Arn Anderson, Whoa. Rick Arn Anderson, of course. Tully Blanchard. Right. Tully Blanchard, and then who's the four? Who do you want to go with the four? Mongo <sighs> McMichaels? Sure. We'll do we'll Bla- No, that's blasphemous. I will yeah. never can't say Mongo McMichaels. Um Lex Luger. Sid Vicious. Crispin Crispin Chris Benoit. Chris Benoit. Chris yeah. Benoit. 
callback. Um, <laughs> so they, they take they take each of your arms and legs, they tie them to a horse, and then all the horses run off in different directions, and you are essentially Just ripped into four ripped pieces. Ripped the fuck apart, yeah. <clears throat> Hence quartering. Um, and that is the uh, that's the ballad of Peter Nears. I mean, I never would have thought that we that someone in, throughout the course of humanity would think it's a good idea to eat a fucking baby's heart in order to gain some sort of unique ability. Let me ask you a question, Jake. All right, go now, for it. Now this is a serious question. Okay. If I told you, and I provide the fetus, right? You don't have to go out and 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 do this on your own. But we'll find some kind of like student loan program where they donate fetuses to medical causes. Well, we won't need that soon because 2020, Bernie's coming in hot, baby. School for everybody. <laughs> Bernie for president. Sorry. What if I tell you all you have to do is eat this fetus heart and you can become invisible for an hour? Nah, I'm not, not, that's gonna be a hard pass, a man. Bite. Nope. You're not gonna take a bite to be invisible. You can do anything you want if you're invisible. Nah, man. Nah, because then you have to live with the fact that you ate that fetus, fetus heart. I'm good. What if now if it was like eat this fetus heart and you're gonna look good for the rest of your life? Hard pass on that one. I huh? I got that covered. I'm like, yo, what type of sauce can I dip it in? What kind of sauce? You got you got dip it sauce? Ranch? You know, I mean, you got sweet baby Honey rays. Mustard? I can make this I can make this happen. I think that So we can agree that invisibility would be the best superpower, right? No. Time not freeze, at all. Time time freezing, huh? Nope. What do you what 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 do you think? Teleportation. No. How not? No. How how can you Terrible. not? How can what? you not want to have teleportation? It's just not as good as the other things. It's just not as good. All right, all right. So invisibility, I I can understand the, but the not allure. even invisibility. <clears throat> Let's go instead of invisibility. You go time freeze. You go to the shit where you could freeze everything around you, but you're still up and moving. And then you're technically invisible. You can just freeze everything. Well, yeah, because technically want, everything else doesn't like, matter. Time in. But how long, I mean, Zach, you, how long Zach can you Morris freeze time this. for? Until you say time in. Yeah, but like, what if you fuck up and you freeze time for like 50 years? Don't do that. But I'm saying that's it can happen. It's also essentially... It, I'm Having this freeze time thing is essentially invisibility. It's teleportation. You can freeze time, take a road trip, and then unfreeze. Yeah, but then Disneyland. you still got to spend the time on the road trip. Or I could just be like, "Hey, guess what? I'm in no traffic. No traffic, though. You're just swerving in and out of cars. No. Probably a lot of traffic. Probably be a lot of traffic, actually. No, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Like teleportation, because it's like, all right, I want to go to Germany. Boom, done. Half a second. I want to come back. Boom, done. Half a second. I want to rob a know? bank. I'm gonna rob. I'm gonna teleport inside of this bank. Grab some cash. Roll out. How do you know that you? How do you know that it doesn't feel like that amount of time for you still? But that's like I don't know if like it's like there's some sort of like wormhole scenario where you're like you have to like go down, go through like a time rip. Well, I don't think you get to choose how teleportation works. Teleportation works the way it works, and you just have to partake in it. I, I no, I agree. But like, you don't know enough about tele- teleportation to make this decision, Jake. Is what I'm saying. I'm saying you're being very short sighted in your decisions. It's my decision. It's it's fine to be your decision, but it's the wrong decision. It's the wrong decision. Oh, I tell you what's a stupid superpower: flying. I'll tell you here. Yeah, nobody. There's planes, helicopters. There's a million <laughs> there, ways to there's fly. There's planes. Nah, not unless you're a Supermax eight or nine, because then oh. you're grounded. Can I tell you? Can I tell you why teleportation is not the best superpower? Please tell me. Name me one way that you would use teleportation to see somebody naked that you wanted to see naked. You couldn't do it. It wouldn't work. <laughs> is, is that like the end game, dude? Invisibility. You could just go fucking into a what is this? A, what is this like a room? Oh, what is this? Freeze Porkies. Time. It's gonna, it's gonna roll into the girl's want. locker room naked. You can do whatever you want. 
I don't. Why is there all this heavy breathing in the in the women's locker room? (laughs) Like, oh yeah, it's just Paul. He's invisible. You freeze time, dude. You could just check everybody out. See what see what everybody's got going on. I don't. I don't think that seeing somebody else naked is the end game when it comes to having super abilities. You think? But I see where your head's at, and I appreciate it. You think it's being able to go to Germany? No, I'm not saying just Germany. I'm saying anywhere. I can right. teleport my way through and in and out of any situation ever. All right, Hitler. Whoa, 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 right. whoa, whoa, whoa. All right, dust boot. <laughs> dust boot. What is this, a submarine? <laughs> all right, well, you're wrong. I'm right again. No, <laughs> you're, you're, you're not. Decide. It's all a matter of opinion. It's all a matter of interpretation. The viewers will decide. Bottom line is, I'm not eating a baby's heart to be invisible for an hour. You're you're missing out. But I mean, if they're like, hey, you could be... You wouldn't eat a baby's heart to spend an hour in a girl's locker room, Jake. I could just go in the girl's locker room. You'll be arrested almost immediately. Oh, yeah, because there's cops standing outside of the girl's locker room. There will be. Arrest this pervert. I don't, I'm just saying, man, like, I wouldn't think that super strength is a great superpower. Like, it's cool, but like, no, you already have that. I already kind of have some, I have strength, but not super strength. Like, um, x-ray, what about x-ray vision, Paul? I feel like it's, it gets muddy, dude. Because yeah, because you, next you thing think you know, about it, you got an eye for a dick. That's why. Well, not, that, not only that, so x-ray vision, right? If you're using it practically, right? You see through the shirt, you see through the bra, but then does it, can you decide how far it goes or does it just, yeah, like, did you say it's just looking, like you're talking to a skeleton at some point? Yeah. Like, do I get to decide the depth that I'm seeing through? I would assume so. You can, it's like uh two times optical zoom, four times optical zoom type thing. <laughs> Again, I don't, I don't have enough information to make that, uh, that decision. So, but uh, yet you do for earnestly. being invisible. We don't under we don't understand the entire parameters of X ray vision. We we know being invisible is cut and dry. Freezing time is, is cut it and though? Dry. Is Everybody it knows though? how it works. Everybody knows how it works. We don't know what type of toll. What if it was like? All right, you're you talking can be about teleporting. You're talking you about be... teleporting. I've seen right. it fly. Ask Jeff Goldblum how that ends. Yeah, it ends in a very great sci fi movie. What if you know being invisible? Every minute that you're invisible, you age twice as fast as you normally do. I'll take that. You'll take that? I'll take that. How long is it going to take? Oh, I don't know. You oh, never... what? So now I'm four hours older instead of two hours older? You never know. I don't plan on doing it for fucking six and a half years at a time. You know, you might. You might it just go up. on some sort of weird up. women's locker room spree where you're uh, checking out all these naked chicks. It would add up quick, dude. That's what I'm uh, saying. Yeah. I guess it's risky. No matter what you do, it's risky. Yeah, like I, yeah, I saw I saw Paul the other day. He looked like fucking Tom Petty. Like <laughs> <laughs> he's thirty fucking three years old. What's wrong with him? <coughs> I'm gonna die, Jake. You're, you're making me sick again with your fucking outlandishness. Um, all right, I think we've I think we've lost the plot a little bit on this. One. Yeah, we kind of we kind of took a hard turn there, but it's been fun. Um, I'm going to put this episode up immediately because we're actually about 24 hours past when it was supposed to go up because I was dying and all. Um, yeah. But uh, it's been fun for sure. Um, tune in. I'm gonna say next week for the, the the thing episode. Yes. We'll do another. We'll do another movie night. Um, other than that, Jake, we're on Instagram. We are on Instagram at the Depthscast. Paul is on Instagram at Breeden Nuclear. 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 I am on Instagram at Jake Lotz. We have a Gmail at the Depths Podcast at gmail.com. We are on YouTube. We are on Spotify. We are on the Apple Podcast app. And for people that use Android, download the Podcast Attic app. Make sure you click on the Apple Podcast little square thing. That way you can yep. listen to our shit. We are there. Rate, review, five stars. Give us some feedback. Shoot your boys a holla. That's all I got for you. That's all. That's we and we love you. And you guys are the shit. If you 
Well, and I was going to say, if you have any fetuses just laying around that you're not just using. If they're just hanging out, maybe just get rid of Rain, them in a very timely manner. Range free only, though. Range, I mean, yeah, organic, range free chicken fetuses, yeah. aka eggs. So, but they can be from real babies too, because I don't think the eggs will make you invisible. You never know. All right, man. All right. Until, until next time. Keep your fetuses close and keep your friends closer. Aye.